Hey everybody, here's my video on utility maximization. We're not going to use calculus here, we're going to use indifference curves. Uh, most of this video is going to talk about how we can do that. First, let me introduce a question though. I've got a utility function, function of two variables, x and y. This one's Cobb Douglas and simple. Uh, simple budget constraint, I've got $5 to spend, and each good costs a dollar. If I solve this with math, choosing X and Y to maximize utility subject to that budget constraint, I'll get a solution of buying 2.5 units of each. Now a lot of us, when we take intermediate macro, have not, or intermediate micro, have not taken any calculus yet, and so we go a different way to solve for this. How do we do it with indifference curves instead of with calculus? Well, if we want to do this with indifference curves, you're going to see pictures like this. Uh, two blue lines, both are called indifference curves. We call them indifference curves because they represent utility. Every point along a single curve has the exact same amount of utility. I am just as happy with a lot of X and a little bit of Y as I am with some combination of a lot of Y and a little bit of X as I am with some mixture of the two. Uh, Cobb Douglas utility functions always give you these nice round shapes that never touch the intercepts. And then for utility maximization, we will find the point where those indifference curves, where one of them touches the budget constraint like here. Why is that? Well, if we were at this first blue line, uh, to spend all of our money, we could get this much utility. But if we bought a little more Y and a little less X, we would shift along the budget constraint this way and move to higher levels of utility. Eventually, the highest level of utility we can get is there. So there's that in a nutshell. My students often want to ask, where do these lines come from and what do they mean? And so I'm going to build this uh, from an entire utility function because it turns out these are basically just sections of a graph. And so here's our utility function. This is the Cobb-Douglas one, the x to the 0.5, y to the 0.5. It gives us the properties of utility we want. More x is a good thing. Utility rises as x rises. And, oh yeah, by the way, the z-axis is utility. I couldn't make it say u up here. It says z. Uh, marginal utility is highest at low levels, but it's still positive at higher levels. Same thing happens with good y. Utility is increasing no matter what y is, but it increases fastest at the beginning. And because we multiply these two terms, we see that utility is highest in the middle. That we are higher utility by having some sort of mix of X and Y than by having all of one or all of the other. And so now that we've got this utility function, this little mountain that goes onward into infinity. This graph only goes to five, but that's fine. It would go on forever and ever in, all, in those directions. Uh, let's see where the indifference curves come from. The indifference curves come from every combination of X and Y that gives the same level of utility. So if I set my Z, my utility function, equal to a fixed number, let's say 1.5, blam, I got this plane here slicing the mountain. Everything that touches that line gives me 1.5 utility. Let's see what it looks like from above. From above, oh snap. That, my friend, looks like an indifference curve. It's a thing of beauty. Now, every point along this line, whether it be all these Y's and a little bit of X, or all these X's and a little bit of Y's, or some combination of both, gives me 1.5 utility. Let's do the same thing, but for a utility level of two. That looks like another indifference curve. Or 2.5. Blam! There's another one. It's very exciting stuff. I'm taking sections of this mountain and tracing my utility from each one. Different levels of utility 
on the same utility curve. And so those indifference curves are tracing the mountain itself. Uh, and that's where they come from. Now, if we want to look at this, let's throw a budget constraint on here. Uh, in this case, I said that each I have $5 to spend and each thing costs a dollar. So there it is. I can either buy five units of good Y and none of X, or five of X and none of Y, or any combination of the two. So something like that. I have to act, I have to choose a pair somewhere along this line or within this point. And what I want to do is get as far up the mountain as I can within that. So to maximize utility without a constraint, I would just go forever to the northeast. I would go forever towards infinite x and infinite y. But within a budget constraint, all I can do is get as high up the mountain as I can. And I can kind of eyeball it. It's obviously something around there. That's the highest utility I can afford to reach. But let's look at how this pertains to indifference curves. Oh, look at that. There's an indifference curve and the budget constraint, and they're not tangent. I'm not going to consume this point or this point because I could move towards a better mix of them and move farther up the mountain. Why be here when I can go farther up? Next indifference curve. Same idea. I'm not going to consume here or here or anywhere down here because I can scoot farther up the mountain again. Whoa, where'd the mountain go? I'll tell you where. It's over there. A point of tangency. There is no possible way to go any farther up the mountain and still be touching this budget constraint than right here when they are tangent to each other. That's where your indifference curve analysis comes from in a nutshell. That's where the tangency point comes in. We're stuck on this mountain, limited by the budget constraint. The farthest up we can get is going to be right there where they touch. So I don't know if that helped you or not. It helps some of my students. Plus, it's kind of a cool graph. Uh, so I hope this video is useful to you. If not, well, too bad. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys, and good luck econing.